Hi, I'm Ed Zinta, and this is What the Funk. In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of contract inheritance and how we can use existing contracts, build upon them, um, and create entirely new contracts using the old functionality. So to demonstrate this, we're going to use the funk concert example that I used in the last video. And if you haven't seen that, um, go ahead and take a look at that. I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, but to demonstrate that, we're going to take this funk concert contract and we're going to create a new contract that inherits from this contract. So um, we'll create a contract and we're going to create a contract that's basically a funk concert with a totally different name. And we can do this for multiple examples, but in this case, we're just gonna pretend we have a band called Abstract Funk Attack. And Abstract Funk Attack is a funk concert. And that's it. We have just inherited from the funk concert contract and we can actually deploy this Abstract Funk Attack concert. And as you can see, just like the funk concert contract it has all the uh, the different features so we've got the fallback function the tickets getter the purchasers map getter and then the ability to buy tickets but this isn't as useful as we would like it to be so in the initial funk concert contract we set the tickets to be five every time and not every concert is going to have only five tickets uh, what if they're in a larger venue and they have more seats they're going to want a different number of tickets so in this base funk concert contract we're going to modify the constructor to take a an argument we're going to call it t and that's going to be the number of tickets to start out with initially so when a new funk concert contract is created it's supposed to take a brand or it's supposed to take an argument on creation to set the number of tickets now the way to do that in a child contract is in the list of inheritance so we're inheriting from this funk concert contract we add uh, the arguments to the contract that we are inheriting from. So in this case, we're gonna have 10 tickets. So we'll go ahead and create this contract again. And as you can see, we start off with 10 tickets. Now, one other cool feature of inheriting from uh, contracts is the ability to set what is called an abstract function. An abstract function is just a function that um, has no actual implementation, but it does define a signature. So let's say that we want every single contract that inherits from this funk concert contract to have a function that displays the concert or the band's website. So in order to do that, we'll create this abstract function we'll call it website and all a website does is returns a string and that's what it looks like so all it does is define this signature it's just a function that returns a string and in order to inherit from this contract you need to implement it in full in your child contract so down below you also see that the uh, remix ID won't let us create or deploy this new contract because it's missing the website function. So we'll go ahead and implement this website function in the child contract. And just note that it has to have the exact same signature as the parent contract. 
And we're just going to return the website for abstract funk attack. All right, now that's implemented. It'll allow us to deploy it. And we have this new website function. And it displays the website of the band. Now, what if you want to inherit or what if you want to let someone know that a contract has a set of functions that all follow a set of uh, or a specific signature, but you don't want to go through the process of creating a whole new contract um, with a bunch of um, implemented functions along with some abstract functions. What if you just care about uh, signatures and not implementation? I mean, you could actually technically create a contract with nothing but um, abstract functions, but it's better to create what is called an interface. And all an interface does it has no logic whatsoever. It just has function signatures. And so if you, you know that if a contract implements uh, this interface, it's going to have these functions that you can call and it's going to return what it says it's going to return. So let's say that we want this particular concert um, to be able to refund tickets. So we're going to create an interface and all you do is use the interface keyword. And we're just going to call it refundable. And the refundable interface has a function called refund. And refund will take a number of tickets and refund um, that number of tickets to the caller and it will return true or false um, based on whether or not it was able to refund. And to return true or false, we use the bool or boolean return type. So now our funk concert, or our abstract funk attack concert, which implements or which um, inherits from funk concert is also a refundable contract. So now because it's inheriting or implementing this refundable interface, we can't deploy it until we implement the refund function. So let's implement that. Use the exact same signature as in the interface. And we actually have to put some implementation. Technically, we could just return true and call it a day. It'll work, but that's not useful at all. So what do we really want to do? What we want to do is check to make sure that whoever is calling the refund function has actually purchased tickets. And if they have, check to make sure they have the same number of tickets or more of what they're trying to refund and then send that money back. And if they don't, we want to fail. So first, let's check um, to see if they actually have that number of tickets. So remember, in the base funk concert contract, we have this mapping, purchasers, and purchasers just lists um, by the key address how many tickets someone has bought. So let's check if in the purchasers mapping if message.sender, remember message.sender is just the address of whoever is calling this function, if they have, well let's, we're gonna, we're gonna fail early on this, so if whatever is in this mapping they have less than the number of tickets they're trying to refund, let's fail. And we can return false. 
otherwise they're free to go through. So the next thing we want to do is actually refund them their money. So in order to refund um, money, we can use a, uh, a function called transfer. Now every address type Every uh, address type has a member function called transfer. So in order to do that, to, to transfer money to the sender, we um, call message.sender, which is itself an address type. We can call the transfer, transfer function. And then we just want to transfer the number of tickets times the price of a ticket and that will transfer that the correct amount of money and then we want to make sure because these tickets have been refunded we want to make sure someone else can go ahead and buy these tickets so we're going to take that number of tickets and subtract it from the from their, their uh, key in the purchaser's mapping, so they don't have any more tickets. And then we're going to add that back to the tickets variable. So plus equals. And the last thing we want to do is return true. So we've implemented this refund function. Let's go ahead and test it out. So we've created that, we've got the getters. Um, let's just check. We have 10 tickets. Let's check to see if this address has any tickets, which they won't. So they have zero tickets. So if we actually try and refund one ticket, it's gonna return false. So let's clear all that out. Let's go ahead and buy a ticket. One ether for one ticket. Buy a ticket. Now let's get rid of that out of there. Now let's check how many tickets we have. We have one ticket. That's taken one ticket away from the total amount of tickets. And then let's go ahead and try to refund that ticket. We can also check our price. We have one ether in or our balance. We have one ether in our wallet. We will refund one ticket. Now we have two ether in our wallet. If we check uh, how many tickets we have, we have zero tickets. And then how many tickets are back in the contract? We have 10 tickets. So as you can see, that refund um, function is working. So in this video, we went ahead and covered inheritance, how you can pass arguments from the, the child contract into the constructor of the parent contract, how to create abstract functions, and how to create interfaces and implement them. If you like this video, go ahead and click thumbs up. If you like uh, the overall content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.